This AIO could actually be a game changer. This is the Deep Cool Mystique 360, and it has a lot going for it. It's got a large cold plate, a gyroscopic sensor, which sounds fancy, a 2.8 inch display, and it's under $200. Has Deep Cool lost their minds, or did they just give system builders a more budget-friendly way to add personalization to their PCs without sacrificing performance? We're gonna find out right here, right now on Roby Tech. When we talked to Deep Cool back in January at CES and found out they were bringing another CPU cooler to the market, we were actually excited about it. I know. Hold on. After all, we do love the Deep Cool Assassin 4 and all of the AK620 digital tower style coolers. And for AIOs, you gotta admit the LS720 and the LT720 and all of their different like offspring have been some of the best value leaders in our metrics. So with all of that in mind, Deep Cool has actually set a high bar for the Deep Cool Mystique and it needs to reach it if it wants to live up to the legacy of the coolers that have come before it. So today we're gonna see if the Mystique is as alluring as its name implies, or if it's more of a Scooby-Doo style villain where the villain is just some angry guy from the hot dog stand. I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. Now let's start with the pricing and where it lands in comparison to other AIOs like it. At the time of recording this video, the Mystique was available with either a 240 millimeter or 360 millimeter variant with a retail price of $149.99 for the 240 millimeter version or $179.99 for the 360 millimeter one. Let that just sink in, $179.99 for an LCD 360 millimeter AIO. That is not bad at all for an LCD equipped AIO, but how does the Mystique actually stack up against other AIOs that also have screens? So since we're looking at the 360 millimeter version today, we're gonna stick with comparing it to other 360 AIOs with LCDs. At the time of this video, Lee and Lee's Galahad 2 LCD retailed for $269.99, the Asus Ryujin 3 for $349.99, and Corsair's IQ Link H150i LCD for $319.99. Now, NZXT did match the $179.99 price point of the Mystique with their Kraken 360 millimeter AIO, but let's be honest, that one's kind of dated. So Deepcool does have some competition when it comes to pricing, but there's not much there. However, when we look at the overall landscape, when we put them all together, the Deepcool Mystique is priced very competitively. Let's move on to compatibility next. When it comes to supported sockets, the Deepcool Mystique offers a wide range of compatibility that we've come to expect from CPU coolers kind of across the board. On the AMD side, the Mystique supports AM4 and AM5. On the Intel side of things, we got support for LGA1700, which gets you 12th, 13th, and 14th gen. And you've got also LGA1200, which is 10th and 11th gen, as well as support for more legacy LGA115X Intel CPUs. This level of compatibility is pretty standard support for CPUs on both sides of the aisle, but we like to confirm details like these rather than assume, because we all know what happens when we assume things not good. Now as far as installation goes, Deepcool made this incredibly simple. There is one set of hardware for AMD and one set for Intel. The mounting bracket screw directly into the AIO pump head and either system has its own set of thumb screws to hold the cooler in place. For the Intel set, there's a back plate as well as extra washers and gaskets to adjust to the right Z height for your CPU. Overall, nothing really stood out as being more or less challenging with the installation of this particular AIO. As for the pump on the Mystique 360, Deepcool is using their fifth generation pump at the heart of this AIO. It has a pump speed of around 3,400 RPM and a noise level of around 21 decibels. The only other information that we have on the pump is that it's three phase, six slot, and four pole motor. As for fans, the Mystique 360 comes with 320 millimeter fans that feature fluid dynamic bearings, a speed range between 500 and 2150 RPMs, and they move air at around 72.45 CFM. Not too shabby for an AIO in this price range, but we'll have to see how it works here in a minute. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been asking us, hey, Roby, what about the overall volume and decibels for the cooler all up? The thing is, is that that's so dependent on all of the other fans and cooling that you put around it, including the GPU, that it kind of feels like a moot point to put that data inside of a review like this. It's actually really hard to measure that because it's gonna be very dependent on everything else put inside of the case. We can't talk about the pump without bringing up the one thing that you can't help but see when you look at the pump, and that's the LCD screen. This thing measures in at 2.8 inches with a resolution of 640 by 480, and it has a neat gyroscopic sensor to detect which way your pump head is facing. This means that you don't have to tilt your head to read the screen before you have the drivers installed, and this, 
is actually probably one of my favorite features. Speaking of reading the display out of the box, the Deep Cool Mystique has system information like CPU frequency and power usage on the display. This information can be switched to view voltage instead, as well as other stats. But if you want to switch the LCD to show your favorite animated GIF of like soup or whatever, the Deep Cool's Deep Creative has got your ticket punched. Not only will Deep Creative allow you to change what's on the display, it will also give you a comprehensive look at your system's performance. We did notice that it wasn't always as accurate as like monitoring software like Hardware Info or Ada64, but let's just say that it got within the parking lot of the ballpark. Now we do have some thoughts on the software that we want to share a little bit later, but we're going to talk about thermal performance first. Now at CPU idle, the Mystique sat at an average CPU temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, which is cool, but not quite as cool as some of the other AIOs at idle. In our charts, 30 degrees puts the Deep Cool Mystique between the Fantex Glacier 1D30 at 31 degrees Celsius and both the Lian Lee Galahad 2 LCD as well as the Corsair IQ Link H150i at 29 degrees Celsius. In our CPU low test, we turned on all of the knobs and cranked all of the cranks in Cinebench to put our CPU 100% under load. And the Deep Cool Mystique met the task. Averaging temperatures of 69 degrees Celsius, the Mystique almost met the Asus Ryujin 3 on its own turf. It got within one degree of the Reigning King at 68 degrees, but it also put a two degree distance between itself and both the Lee and Lee Galahad 2 LCD and the Corsair IQ Link H150i at 71 degrees Celsius, which is not bad. Now during our gaming test, the performance of the Mystique was a bit more modest. With CPU averages at 46 degrees Celsius, the Deep Cool Mystique matched Corsair's AIO one more time while staying three degrees cooler than the Fantex Glacier 1 D30 at 49 degrees Celsius. It was one degree off from being in the top three, but it still put up a valiant effort. Now, you might be scratching your head saying, why is it so good under CPU load, but more middling at idle and gaming? And you wouldn't be alone in asking that question. We wrestled with that, but we do think we have an answer. But before we answer that question, let's look at the relative value before we get too far into the weeds. In case you've probably slept at least once since our last CPU cooler video, here's the fancy math. It's CPU thermal max, which is 100 degrees Celsius, minus the CPU temperature under load, and then we divide that number by the retail price. This gives us a dollars per degree of cooling value, which we can then score and compare. In this case, lower is better. And again, this is not taking anything else into account, just pure cooling power. With a relative value score of 5.8, the Deep Cool Mystique lands in the top three alongside the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 ARGB at 5.56 and the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 at 4.64. We're gonna talk about those two troublemakers in another video because we do have some words for them, but this isn't the time or place for that. However, there is a much different story when we look at the AIOs with LCDs. While we're still rebuilding all of our charts for this year, we do have two that fit the bill the Lian Lee Galahad 2 LCD and the Asus Ryujin 3. For comparison, the Galahad 2 LCD scored a 9.31, which remember, lower is better, and the Ryujin 3 scored 10.62. So with the score of 5.8, the Mystique has positioned itself as a value leader among LCD equipped AIOs. And honestly, we think that could be even better than what we're seeing today, which we're gonna talk about right now. As we wrap up our thoughts and observations into a pretty zip tied bow, let's talk about the two things we said we're gonna get back to which the more we looked into both of them, the more we were certain these two things were actually tied together. And it all comes down to software. As we mentioned earlier, DeepCool's Deep Creative software is pretty straightforward on the surface. It's more comparable to stuff like NZXT's CAM or Lian Lee's L Connect 3. Deep Creative lets you, the user, change a handful of settings for the AIO while providing some basic system monitoring. What we discovered though, was that Deep Creative registered between eight and 13% CPU load in our task manager. And that was while our system was at idle. But that wasn't the only scenario we saw this. This also happened during gaming as well. While that doesn't sound like a significant amount of core usage, that does translate into an extra degree or two of heat. Now you might be thinking, Roby, this all sounds kind of familiar. Haven't we seen something like this before? And if that's you, <laughs> Guess what? A plus, you're right. You get two gold stars. We have seen similar situations in the past with both NZXT and Corsair, and we've given them both stern talking tos, and they have promised to never be greedy with their system resources again. At least that's what the penitent look on their faces seemed to say. The good news is this. If Deepcool can wrangle their software CPU usage, then we think it could lower the temperatures at both idle and in gaming, moving the Mystique even further up on our charts. 
It's already positioned as a top tier choice for heavy CPU loads, but lowering non-essential processes could be a game changer for thermal performance at every stage in the process. So Deep Cool, if you're listening, which I know you probably are, we need you to get the Deep Creative whole thing figured out. Now, before we jump off the software train, there is one more thing worth mentioning, and this case shows it perfectly. If you have a Deep Cool digital case, like this one, and you also have the Mystique, the software doesn't exactly play well with each other, and getting the two to work together is a bit of a chore. Which first, why the heck are there two different software packages is beyond me. But second, the fact that they both try to install on top of each other is also confounding. If you want to use both, which you can see us figure out on the live stream build, which we used for the Mobius right here, you need to change the default directory to do different locations. And even then, it will remove the shortcut for the other one from your desktop. You need to then find it, then run both software packages, which sucks up even more resources because you're running two instead of one. Come on, Dcool. Not to mention who knows what CDN they're using to host the installation software, but it shouldn't take 10 minutes to download an 80 mig file from a gigabyte network. Point is, I love innovation, but software is just as important as hardware. All of that aside, we do really like the Deepcool Mystique. Installation was simple, the LCD quality was crisp and vivid, and the AIO performed very well. Even with the software setback, and more so if you need to use two different software suites, as it stands today, if we were going to recommend an AIO for PCs that need extra cooling for CPU intensive workloads, and you also wanted to have an LCD, the Deepcool Mystique is a solid choice for being priced under $200. At the end of the day, the Mystique lives up to the legacy of what we've come to expect from Deepcool, solidly performing parts that look really cool and are also really inexpensive but they just need to fix their software. So those were our thoughts on the Deepcool Mystique 360 AIO, but we wanna know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Just because it's cheaper, does that mean you should sacrifice some quality like what you saw in the software? Do you feel like the value of this AIO is right where you expect? And all in all, is this an AIO you would actually use in one of your builds? So let us know all that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring the notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this right here on Robitech. Also, if you have other questions or you want to talk more in depth about some of the data we have or just want to talk about builds in general, head over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash Robitech, where you can find other like-minded individuals who would love to talk about those very same things. And you know what? You might just make a friend. Also, follow us on all the socials absolutely everywhere. Thank you so much for watching this video, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.